Hi everyone, Stepan here. Today I'm going to continue the series on the English opening with my favorite defense for black by far uh, when black plays pawn to c6 on move one. Now what this means is that black is a Karakan and a Slav player or a semi-Slav player and that black would like to get you into positions he knows or she knows and that they are comfortable with. So this is called the Karakan defensive system technically, but it's going to be a transposition to something else definitely. So I struggled a lot to come up with a name with this video. I ended up calling it the Karakan defensive system, but it's really White's anti-Slav and anti-Karakan approaches to, to this position. So let's have a look at the idea Black has. So Black wants to play d5 on the next move, and if white should oblige and play something like d4 on move 2, which objectively should be the best move, there are a ton of crows in my neighborhood at the moment. I don't know what's going on, maybe you can hear them, maybe not, but there seems to be uh, a congregation of crows somewhere nearby or what i've learned uh it's actually called a murder of crows where can you guys hear this this is insane okay they seem to be doing something outside of my window okay so if black should play d4 then we are transposing to the slav defense or the semi-slav defense depending on on what black does later if white plays e4 we are transposing to the Karakan defense and after d5, this is now the accelerated pan of attack after e takes, c takes, c takes, this is a, the accelerated pan of with knight of 6. Or if white should now play the move d4, this is the standard pan of attack. Now, if you've been watching my videos, I, I'm just going to close the window, this is weird, sorry. I, 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 I don't know what, what this is about, but there are 20 crows in the backyard. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you've been watching my videos for any period of time, you will know that I'm a Karakan player. And what makes these positions easy for me to play is the safety behind the pawn structure I know I'm going to get. So I want to play d5 and I want to get my pawn to e6, I want to have a safe position, which is either a Karakan or a Semislav. And one major thing we always have to consider as white when playing against this, and one major thing every black player would like to achieve, is getting this bishop outside of the pawn chain before uh, white can punish it, or if white plays a move that allows it easily. So I have extremely good results with, with the setup because most white players don't understand some subtleties. For example, if at any point white should play the move b3, which can also be played on move 2, going into a normal reti or a type of Nimtso Larsen, then bishop f5 can be played uh, for free, so to speak. Or in other words, there will be no way to punish it. Why? Because if, for example, b3 and d5 and let's say bishop b2, knight f6, knight f3, bishop f5. The usual way to punish uh, the move bishop f5 or the move bishop g4 is to eventually play queen b3, targeting the weakness on b7. When white plays with b3, there is no way to do that because the queen's path is blocked. So that's black's main strategic goal, getting the bishop out. If black wants to play a sort of reverse London system or a normal Karakan or a Semislav. Now, there are black players who want to play this position with g6, as we are going to see. But bishop f5 is very thematic, or getting the, the bishop out. Now, if we don't play uh, d4 or e4 for white here, what do we do? We are going to be looking at two different setups. We're going to be looking at setups with a kingside fianchetto with g3, and we're going to be looking at sort of reti setups uh, with b3 and e3 for white. These are going to be our two main uh, approaches to this. Now, 
from my experience, uh, when people play e3, it's likely going to transpose to my normal slot defense. And I'm going to show you why and how. So in my opinion, e3 is not the critical approach. Why? Because black is going to get the position they want anyway. And g3, on the other hand, has extreme downsides, which allow black to more than equalize. So to be honest, I don't see why everybody doesn't just play c6 against the English because you get to avoid white's main positions. Now, it's not as critical as e5 as the reverse Sicilian. It's not as attacking. It's not as aggressive, but it definitely doesn't allow white an advantage. So let me show you knight f3 uh, first uh, and, and e3. So if d5, I'll, I'll just briefly show you the setup, then we are going to go into details on g3 and e3 systems in, in parts 2 and 3 of this video. So e3, now I should mention that if white at any point plays d4, then we are transposing. Okay, knight f6, uh, knight c3 is the correct move. Notice how bishop f5 cannot be played now because takes, takes, and queen b3. This is going to be a team we're going to be seeing all the time. Now, just recently I had a training game against a friend and he played b3 on move 4, where I was able to play bishop f5 for free. And he achieved the same setup he was going to achieve a bit later on, but he allowed bishop f5. Now, uh, if you start with knight c3, black doesn't have a useful move here. Black needs to either play e6, g6, a6, or get the bishop out, but getting the bishop out can be punished. For example, if bishop g4, then queen b3, queen b6, and knight e5. And white stands better. If, for example, bishop e6 here, then d4, you can play it here and get a very promising position. Knight bd7. Now, it's actually possible to take here and go knight a4. I think white stands pretty well here. So against knight c3, what I do since I play the semi-slav is e6 and what other people do if they want to play the chameleon or the, 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 the check or whatever, the fianchetto, they play a6 or g6 and so on. So the setup white is going to be playing for is after e6 has been played, now you go b3. And you want to play queen c2, bishop b2 and bishop e2, for example. Knight bd7, bishop b2, bishop d6, black is playing a standard, standard, standard semi-slav. Queen c2, castles, bishop e2, rook e8, castles. And this is the e3 setup. Now, at some point you have to decide whether you want to go d4 or not. In my experience, white really should play e4. The only downside of black... Uh, playing e5, which of course can easily played if there can easily be played if there's no d4 on the board, is that if black goes e5, then takes takes and knight b5, where this bishop is either lost or forced back, and white has extreme control over the c7 square, and after something like knight c7, black is forced to give up the bishop anyway. So White will have to decide whether to play d4 and transpose to a standard anti-Meran semi-slav or not. Now, one thing I should say, watch my semi-slav series and also watch my video on the Pan of Karo Khan, which I'm going to make a separate video on the accelerated Pan of, by the way, just as a side note, but the anti-Meran systems are going to be very important for White here. Okay, and then finally, if white starts with g3 or eventually plays g3, for example, uh, d5 and bishop g2 or knight f3, for example, uh, bishop g2, knight f6, knight f3, we are now in what Mikhail Marin recommends for white, which I simply don't like for white because my favorite move is is what i play here i go bishop f5 and i go into a very extreme line where uh white sort of punishes me by playing queen b3 so takes takes queen b3 and now i give up a pawn with knight c6 now if you've seen my video uh published last year at some point i'm going to uh share it up here uh where my opponent taught for 45 minutes in this position i didn't take the pawn 
then you'll know that this is tricky for white to understand. And I'm going to show you lines in which black wins immediately. So white should take the pawn on b7, and the position should be about equal, but black gets huge play, okay? And alternatively to bishop f5, there's a move I personally don't like, which will lead on into a sort of open Catalan position or neo-Catalan position or a Catalan proper if white ever plays d4, which is takes on c4. And with this move, black gives up the center and is prepared to hold on to the pawn with b5 or with, for example, knight d7, knight b6 and bishop e6. So playing g3 setups allows this pawn gambit which I believe is very scary uh, for black, and I would never play it, but theory says that this is black's best approach. Still, I, I prefer the move bishop f5. Okay, so let's get into the g3 systems. So c4, c6, g3. Okay, white isn't happy with the Reti type setup with b3 and, and so on. White isn't happy with equality or an eventual transposition to the actual Slav. So white plays g3, d5, knight f3, or bishop g2, knight f6, bishop g2. And now what are black, black's options? Uh, first thing I should say is that e6 is unnecessary, definitely. If you usually play the closed Catalan against the Catalan, or you play the semi-Slav, here you don't have to play e6. It's not necessary to play e6. That being said, you don't have to play the move I play, bishop f5, which is the second or third, the second most popular move. You don't have to play that. There are other moves. You can go bishop g4, you can go g6, uh, you can also, as I said, go bishop f5, or you can take the pawn. These are the moves we have to look at. I've played all of them at some point during my career, I've concluded that bishop f5 is the most comfortable move for me. Again, nobody has ever taken that pawn on b7, which was unlucky because I have the line prepared 30 moves deep. Uh, but I still got good positions, and I'm going to show you why. Now let's start with the move g6. Uh, and against g6, I would recommend that you simply challenge this diagonal if you don't want to play d4. Uh, if you want to play with d3, it's cautious and prudent to start with b3 here. Of course, this will allow an eventual bishop outing uh, without queen b3, but you have to challenge this diagonal. So bishop g7, bishop b2, everything is safe. Castles, castles. So this is a very standard Reti, and we are going to be focusing on this position more in the Reti series. Uh, bishop g4, d3, very, very standard. And after something like bishop f3, which should be white's best idea, and bishop f3 and e6, black's best idea, I'm sorry, black got rid of the bad bishop, black has a very solid position, white is going to be trying to push through with e4 and has to be careful about ideas like knight d7, knight c5. And I think white is slightly better, but black definitely has no issues. Uh, the engine says plus 0 0.4, so not a big deal. Uh, this is your standard sort of uh, Reti versus semi-Slav position or Slav position, in which neither side really has an advantage. So g6 definitely not a critical move, but if black wants a, a slow game, then, then it's okay. Now, if black is trying to win, we have to look at dc4, bishop f5, or bishop g4. Let's get into bishop g4 first, because that's a move I personally don't really like. Uh, and here is why. White always has the threat of knight e5. However, if white plays knight e5 straight away, then there's bishop e6. And after cd5, black doesn't take with the pawn, black actually takes with the bishop. So, whenever I had this position, I was happy. But whenever my opponent would punish bishop g4 by taking first, where now I have to take with the pawn, and then knight e5, I was in trouble. And I remember a training game where I played bishop f5 here, which I knew was the best move, but I didn't know any ideas. I lost in 20 moves, and I'm going to show you an alternative to bishop f5, which I think is much better. So, if bishop f5, then the way to punish this is simply knight c3, 
and you wait for e6. If e6 isn't played, this bishop is not going to be developed uh, and this pawn is going to be under attack. So e6 at some point, and when e6 is played, then g4. And black's position is just horrible. Bishop g6, h4. Now if you play h6, then of course knight g6 gives white a huge advantage. If you try to swap pieces, then just d4. And, and again, h5 is coming, so now you either have to play h6 or h5, at which point again, knight takes and the, not, not a good position. So against knight e5, a better move is actually bishop to d7, not allowing these tricks. However, if you play bishop g4 and then play bishop d7, we don't even have to discuss that the, the fact that this bishop, having spent two tempi, is much worse than this knight that spent an equal amount of tempi. So this knight is on e5, this bishop is on d7, so this has to be inferior for, for black in my opinion. That being said, bishop g4 isn't the losing move or anything, I just think the positions are harder for black to play. Now, bishop f5. This is what I play, aiming to get a reverse London system. Uh, you can call this whatever you want. There are a million names, none of them is proper. Uh, you could call it the Karakan defensive system still, you could call it the English opening, you could call it the London system for black. It doesn't really matter. The point is that I want to get the setup I play. Now, after bishop f5, white has several decent moves that don't try to punish bishop f5 such as castles, such as b3, um, even d3, and, and they are all sort of okay, even d4. But if you don't punish bishop f5, then black is equal or better, because all of black's pieces are perfect, and there is no pressure down the diagonal. The idea of this c6, e6, d5 triangle against the, the Fianchetto English is that your bishop is just impotent. So, we're only going to have a look at one move, and there's only one move black should be afraid of, and only one move that could give white an advantage if black's make, black makes a mistake. Now, I faced the same opponent twice from this position. The first time, where he did think for 45 minutes, again, I linked that game uh, a while back, he took and did play queen b3, and I'm going to show you what happened. The second time, he actually just castled. And you can also find that game on the channel. So he didn't want to get into those complications again. So let's look at the critical line. CD, CD, Queen B3. Now Black can play passive moves like Queen B6 or Queen C8 or Bishop C8, which I would not recommend. That way you actually do get punished for Bishop F5. No, we're gonna go Knight C6. And as I said, my opponent spent 45 minutes thinking and ended up playing D3 in our first game. Uh, the critical move, of course, is queen takes b7. Now, what's the point? Your knight is attacked, you gave up a pawn. Well, the idea is, you play bishop d7, and now white has to spend two moves retreating the queen. He has to play queen b3, and then he has to play uh, queen to d1. If not, white is losing. And Black's idea is by the time white does that, black is going to expand in the center with e5 and play rook b8 gaining a tempo and then play bishop b4 check if the d pawn moves and just gain a ton of time for the pawn. And one Croatian grandmaster, Ivan Šaric, has a very nice game in this same variation from the black side, which is actually how I learned the variation for the first time. Okay, now white plays queen b3. If white doesn't play queen b3, then black wins immediately. Just rook b8, queen a6 only move, knight b4, game over. You're going to win uh, the, the rook on a1, and th there is nothing white can do about it. Because the queen is attacked and the c2 square is attacked, and there is no way to easily defend the c2 square. If you want, you can check these mistakes with the engine, but basically... Uh, it's game over. Now, white plays queen b3, knows what's going to happen, and we don't start with rook b8, we actually play e5 first. Okay, now white has two moves, castles or d3. Uh, castles, I think, is slightly inferior to d3, and against this, we just go rook b8, 
and black should already be slightly better here and just e4 this if this isn't worth the pawn then i don't know what is look at white's pieces okay and after something like 91 look at white's pieces so the way that this is just funny the only active piece is blocked by two pawns and the way to continue this position is just to go h5 and eventually white has to start developing so d3 and just h4 you have a target you know where the king is just smash through white's defenses and get to the king so i think a, a better move should be d3 and now we start with rook b8 chasing the queen away queen d1 and bishop b4 check this is the second chance you gave white to lose the game in one move uh, there are three possible moves well four possible moves king f1 knight bd2 bishop d2 or knight fd2 only one move gives white equality uh, king f1 is weird but doesn't lo lose on the spot black is better uh, knight, BD, knight bd2 and bishop d2 lose immediately to the same pattern if knight bd2 then e4 and game over why well you have to either t move the knight or take let's say you take first and let's say knight g5 because that's the only sensible move and now e3 and your knight is hanging with check and it's pinned and your f-pawn is attacked so you have to take and when you take i go knight g4 and you resign uh, i'm attacking your knight i'm attacking the f6 square preparing queen f6 my knight attacks uh, the e pawn uh, threatening to fork queen and bishop and, and and that's about it this is like plus 10 for black the same uh, pattern can be applied to bishop d2 same same thing e4 and and wins so the only move is knight f to d2 and if knight f to d2 is the only move let's look at white's pieces again now again if this isn't worth pawn i, I don't know what is and we have an easy way to continue this position now there are two approaches to this the main move is actually h5 but what i like is queen c8 and this move was played by ivan sharic you can you can see that game online sharic kismatulin versus sharic and the idea is of course not only to put pressure down the c file but to exchange white's only active piece the defensive bishop on on g2 so after castles for example bishop h3 knight f3 let's say bishop takes king takes yep the pawns are coming again and none of these pieces have moved so e4 is coming h5 is coming extremely hard for black to defend i don't want to go deeper because there is no theory here what you have to do is do what i did spend a week studying all the variations like 20 moves deep and then when this happens in your game you'll just spend no time and instantly beat your opponent because there are so many tricks here and so many positions where white could go badly wrong that black has to be better or have better practical chances at least now if you turn on the engine it says minus 0 0.1 now it changes to plus 0 0.1 so it's basically equal and even though it's equal i don't think this is a good kind of equal for white okay and now this variation is the main reason why i think playing g3 setups against the Karakan defensive system or against c6 on move one isn't a good idea i'm biased and i have a great score with black against this however practically speaking if black plays bishop f5 and you want to play for an advantage you have to go into that line <clears throat> so good luck i hope we meet each other over the board okay now let's let's have a look at the the main move and that's d takes c4 now black gives up the center and hopes that white will a uh gambit the pawn long term or b spend a ton of time uh getting the pawn back and one of these things is going to happen so let's say castles okay and b5 immediately is definitely playable but there are other ways to save this pawn to try and save this pawn let's look at b5 first because that 
that's just the critical way to defend the pawn and the most permanent way, way. Against b5 immediately white is going to be gambiting the pawn long term. No other way to do this. You have to undermine this huge structure on the queen side and you have to start with a4. Now I myself have played the semi-slav against the Catalan all the time and I usually do take the pawn. So this is the position I get. This is by transposition. Uh, there, there's no pawn on d4, fine, but by transposition this is very very similar. So bishop b7 and now b3. If, if you do nothing uh, and black consolidates with a6, knight bd7, e6, something like bishop c5, queen b6, castles, those are the moves black would like to play, then the pawn is safe, so you have to do something now. So the idea is b3, cb3, queen b3, and a6. And white should be better in this position, which is why I don't think b5 should be played on move 5. However, black is a safe pawn up, and if black manages to avoid any dynamic downsides, then black is okay. So any slow move by white can be punished here immediately. For example, rook e1, rook d1, uh, bishop b2, knight c3, knight a3. Against all of these, you go e6, and you're fine. Next move, you're going to go bishop d6 or bishop e7 and castle. Okay, so white has to do something now. And I think white's only chance to play for an advantage or to keep the advantage is bishop a3. The idea behind bishop a3 is very simple. You want to ruin black's castling, and it's definitely not possible to play uh, something like g6 because your bishop could easily be challenged on, challenged on that diagonal, and you're giving white a hook to attack with h4, h5 later on, and you're not defending your f7 pawn, so something like knight e5, knight g5 immediately is extremely scary. So you have to play with e6, and had uh, white gone knight e5 or knight g5 on the previous move, then the simple e6 would have defended f7 and prevented bishop a3. So the only correct way to play, I believe, is bishop a3. And now, of course, if e6, then bishop f8, king f8, and white definitely stands better. Or alternatively, knight bd7, and simply rook c1, preventing c5, and something like queen b6 preparing c5, knight c3. And then again, if you ever go e6, scary. Uh, and c5 with this discovered attack isn't possible. So e6 and again bishop f8, rook f8 or king f8 and then white goes d4 for example something like this should be more than enough to compensate for the pawn. Okay now there are alternatives to b5. Uh, black could play g6 or bishop e6 and those moves aren't critical so we're not going to be focusing on them. Uh, if bishop e6, then simply knight g5, bishop d5, e4 should be fine. And black now has to play h6, e d5, hg5, dc6, knight c6 should be equal uh, or about equal, in my opinion, where white has the bishop pair and this diagonal is extremely strong. So I don't think bishop e6 should be uh, the move black chooses. Also g6, nah, something like knight a3 and, and b5 and knight e5 is very very similar to the open Catalan and there are a million threats in this position. Black is, white is threatening knight b5 and, and knight c6 and, and white is just going to get the pawn back and be better. So if you know anything about the Catalan, g6 isn't a wise move here. So the alternative to b5 is knight bd7, and this may seem passive, but the idea is knight b6, okay? White tries to get the pawn back. Uh, it's possible, though, to start with knight a3, but black is going to do the same thing, knight b6, and then eventually you are going to play queen c2 anyway. The difference is that queen c2 first gives you some flexibility, so knight b6, and in this position, uh, b5 uh, by by black really I, I don't think is a playable move as an alternative to knight b6 because now on a4 and bishop to b7 there's knight e1 and th this becomes very scary 
you are threatening to take so the bishop has to be defended so something like queen c8 and a simple move like d3 just ruins black's pawn structure completely white is going to get the pawn back and more so just stick to the main lines as black and go knight b6 and now white has two approaches either a4 knight a3 or or knight a3 immediately I find a4 a bit more pleasant, to be honest, when I was preparing this for white. And as you know, the English is going to be a huge part of my repertoire from now on. So I've actually decided to go a4. But knight a3 is... I actually don't know which one is more popular. a4, 230 games, knight a3, 200 games. So about the same. If knight a3 immediately, then you simply cannot move the a pawn. And bishop e6 defends the pawn. Knight e5 is going to be the usual pattern and then queen d4 this is what we are going to, going to be dealing with and then against queen d4 white's main move is to take on c6 bc6 bishop c6 check bishop d7 bishop a8 knight a8 and in this position uh it's two pieces uh for a rook <clears throat> I'm not sure which side I like. The engine says white is slightly better. However, I find it extremely scary to trade off the pawn. So I'm not a big fan of, of this position, uh, if I have to be perfectly honest. Uh, there are alternatives and you don't have to reach this, but this will be very common. And I would suggest you, you start out with a4 and move 7. Against a4 the threat is simple a5 so black has to play a5 and now it's important to look at the weaknesses created obviously the the b3 weakness is way more significant than the b6 weakness because it's defended by a pawn so if black keeps this pawn a4 can be punished however we go knight a3 now without blocking our pawn and black has options bishop e6 or queen d5 if bishop e6 then in this case we could go knight e5 or knight g5, which I think is better in this position, and then white plays bishop to g4. And trading the pawns is something you have to do. If you play something like rook e1, then h6 chases your chases your knight away, so you're not in time to do anything good. So I think knight c4 is better. And after bishop e2, now knight e5 is the compensation. And White has to retreat, cannot take the rook, of course, because you would win the rook in the corner with tempo. So something like bishop h5, and I think white has a pleasant position, and which is why I don't think bishop e6 is critical. I think queen d5 is critical for for uh, black. And now we do the same thing we did previously. We go knight e1, uh, unleashing our bishop. And if black moves the queen away, then it's definitely much better for white. So black has to counterattack. So bishop f5, and now bishop d5, bishop c2, bishop c6 check, b6, and knight takes. Uh, I believe knight, knight a takes is forced because you have to defend your pawn. And if we have a look at this position, uh, black has seven pawns, white has seven pawns, black's pawn structure is ruined. Uh, I don't think it's a big deal according to the engine. The engine says equal. However, uh, I don't think the control the c4 pawn provides is good enough to compensate for the ruined pawn structure. That being said, you've given up the b4 square and the a4 pawn is weak. So a simple plan like knight d7, knight c5 could overwhelm this pawn, but you have ideas of your own, like knight e3, knight c2, knight a3 trading pawns, and then going into an equal endgame. So, yet another reason why I don't think G3 systems are optimal for white is a position like this, where if black knows exactly what to do, black can achieve equality. Now, uh, let's have a look at E3 systems for white. <clears throat> so, uh, E3 systems are definitely not as punishing and this is the position you're going to be getting over and over and over and over again. Unfortunately, if black plays the semi-slav or any sort of slav, black will know what to do here. And 
eventually you are going to have to play d4 transposing into the anti meran now if you turn on the engine for a setup like this the engine says d4 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 play d4 at every single move because it's simply the best thing to do you need to uh, play in the center occupy the center control e5 and c5 and make it harder for black to develop this bishop as i said previously if you never play d4 then e5 comes unopposed most importantly if the b5 square is covered there is no downside to that so at some point you have to consider playing d4 and transposing that is the biggest downside of e3 systems that you're going to end up in a slav or in a semi-slav but let's look at the positions so if you desperately want to avoid g3 against the Karakhan defensive system then you start out knight f3 d5 now again if you ever play d4 you're in the standard semi-slav or slav so e3 knight f6 and now as we said b3 even though it's a part of your setup allows bishop f5 and allows black complete equality or even more than equality so never play b3 before they commit to either e6 or g6 or a6 okay so knight c3 okay uh, e6 is the main move entering a semi-slav position uh, it's also possible to play a6 resembling the a6 slav so if d4 this is the a6 slav uh, normal stuff where b5 can be played and, and so on uh, <clears throat> so we're gonna go queen c2 against a6 not d4 and black's main is g6 okay now that black has committed to something we go b3 black at, at any point decide to go bishop f5 with the tempo on the queen uh, but it can easily be dealt with so it's not a big deal so bishop g7 bishop b2 castles bishop e2 completing our setup rook e8 and now do you want to allow e5 or not i mean this is the critical position if i were white and i i'm not, not going to be playing this i'm going to be playing g3 because i think it's easier to play for a win with g3 but if i were white in this position i would definitely play d4 because if you don't let's say you castle completing your setup then e5 and after something like d3 your position is much worse even according to the engine like the engine says uh, minus one for black minus 0.9 to minus one i think it's even worse than that this center is completely safe the b5 square has been covered especially against a6 systems and when the bishop isn't on d6 punishing e5 with takes takes and knight b5 isn't possible because your knight doesn't have the b5 square so black is definitely better here something like knight bd7 cd5 and takes semi or open c file but shared and after b5 bishop b7 rook c8 there is no way in the world black can be worse or even that white can equalize so i think that eventually you're gonna have to play d4 and transpose of course this is now a normal slav defense and i'm sorry you have to know slav theory if you don't want to be worse no other way to go about it okay alternatively black could just start with g6 straight away and if you remember what we saw um, there are moves that complete your setup like b3 like bishop e2 like queen c2 i would advise you to go d4 again and we don't have to deal with that because it's a slav defense so against g6 do that and there are also moves like bishop g4 and bishop f5 which we are now going to be punishing uh, after bishop g4 c takes d5 black really should take on f3 i think that's the only viable option here and c takes d5 and now d4 uh, black has given up the so-called bad bishop and is going to play e6 and even though black uh, even though white has the bishop pair i don't think it's a big deal uh, even though e4 is going to be playable of course there is enough control over e4 to open this bishop up once e4 happens this isolated queen's pawn position that the end uh, that the game is going to end up in i think is perfectly fine for black and pawn structure solid pieces active c file shared for both players rooks safe king for black 
I don't think there's an issue there and especially without the f3 knight an isolated queen spawn position without a knight on e5 is never dangerous so not a big deal now one more thing that we have to look at is the move bishop f5 in this position and bishop f5 in this position simply isn't good for black because white has played the move e3 instead of the move g3 and it simply means that e3 eventually will not be possible if you remember the patterns from the previous chapter so against this cd5 cd5 queen b3 simply forces the bishop back to c8 and if you have to play bishop c8 obviously the opening did not go well so i think bishop f5 even though it's a playable move it's a theoretical move uh, and it gives what black wants to achieve when playing this even though black knows the bishop is going to go back to c8 is black wants a symmetrical pawn structure so if you want equality it's okay if you want to play for a win not okay okay and by far the main move is e6 which is what i play uh, which is most what most people play and remember if e6 has been played the bishop isn't getting out so b3 safe to play let's complete the setup black is going to be playing an anti meran uh, and hope for d4 after something like rook e8 preparing e5 and b6 reinforcing uh, the center with bishop b7 again it's time to go d4 if you don't go d4 black could be uh, much better here so as you can see the engine says d4 and as i told you d4 is always going to be the engine first choice let's have a look at a weird move like a3 now you don't want to rush with e5 as black and i'm going to show you why if you go e5 the common pattern is cd cd knight b5 with again huge huge threats against the bishop and against the c7 square where rook c1 comes and white overtakes the black seventh rank however if that can be dealt with uh with for example a6 not now but at some point then black will be threatening e5 so that's something you have to keep an eye on uh, whenever the b5 square is covered well enough and you haven't played d4 if e5 comes black has more than equalized so this is your setup if you want to go e3 uh which again i wouldn't recommend again as white i'm going to be playing the g3 systems because a i know how to punish bishop f5 pawn sacrifices because i've studied them for a long time and b i'm confident enough to go into the pawn sacrifice lines so that's what i'll be doing i hope you got something from the video hope it was useful if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below and see you tomorrow stay tuned for more chess bye